Okay, get some audio going here. too quiet for music but we will see very shortly um okay are we ready <laughs> okay welcome everybody to my studio here in vancouver canada my name is michael markowski and i'm just gonna roll up my sleeves because we're gonna get in it today Okay, so um, we are going to continue the lessons we've been doing for the past three months. I've been, this is the 65th live stream that I've done since middle of March. So for me, that's um, a pretty big achievement getting three months of, of uh, experience using all of this technology and coming to you live over the interwebs. And I just thought I would just, while I'm thinking about that, just saying that, uh, oh, was my, I'm brushing up against my mic. Is it a little loud? I see my comments from my wife up there. Um, maybe let's just turn that down just a tad. Uh, um, and I just think that it's worth just kind of pointing out that um, everybody starts from somewhere. Right? Not everybody just appears out of the gate knowing exactly how to do everything and doing everything perfectly well. And I'm still learning, just like you're learning. And I look at other people and figure out how they do it. And then I take all those kind of steps and incorporate that into my own um, uh, practice, just like you're doing right now. And so if you feel like you know things aren't going the way that you want them to be going, well, life, just like art, is a process, right? And uh, I don't think there's any artist that you'll ever meet, no matter how famous they are and accomplished they are, I don't think any of them will ever tell you they've got it all figured out and that they can just kind of walk away feeling that they've just done it, right? It's almost like the the... the uh, every artwork, you're always like, oh, I just can't quite get it. I'm, I need a little bit more. I'm going to figure it out next time, right? So in uh, one of the books that I recommended earlier um, called Art and Fear, which I kind of showed people before, um, is, you know, they talk about like the seeds of each artwork is planted um, in the previous one, right? So I just think just me reflecting on where I am and how good or poorly I'm doing right now um, is, you know, it's a process and that might possibly inspire other people as they go. Anyway, uh, let's get to today's class. So today we're going to be learning how to draw eyes. So on Tuesday, I showed you how to draw a portrait, the basic structure of the human face. And that was, you know, and I very quickly kind of covered how to draw an eye. And today we're going to spend the whole class, the whole hour or so, talking specifically about the human eye. Because if you're drawing a person's face, whether it's somebody you know or you don't know, or somebody you're inventing from your imagination, getting the eye right is the key, right? It's because we are hardwired to look for eyes in things and we're our, you know our our bodies look for you know we, there's so much that is conveyed through the eyes right the the age of people um you know there maybe even people say the the windows to the soul we can kind of figure out like what are they thinking we some you know so we might know if somebody's being honest or dishonest or happy or sad blah 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 you know and even the health of somebody right uh, uh whether somebody is 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 um you know there was just i was 
watching uh, The Last Dance about Michael Jordan. And there's a whole bunch of speculation as why are his eyes red all the time? Like, what's going on there, right? That's, you know, because in the documentary, is he sad? Or is he having some sort of health problem? So there's, if you, I mean, go on the internet, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff about that. But it's just interesting how the eyes convey so much. So if we can get the eyes right, then a lot of the other places fall into position. And not only that, it opens up the possibility that you could start really playing with the other facial features. You can really start playing with the nose or the lips or the ears, the chin, the hair, and you can take a lot more liberties with those. Although people do do that with the eyes, you know, anime and um, uh, manga comics, Japanese, Korean, um, Chinese comic books are really probably the, the biggest innovators of uh, playing with the size and the shape of the human eye. But that's, we'll get into that as we go. Okay, so let's, uh, traditionally what we do here is we do a little bit of a warm up drawing to kind of get our feet wet. So let's go to a blank page in our sketchbook. And while you're getting um, your, we wanna have also, maybe I should just mention this. Ooh, this one's got a bunch of junk all over it. Um, you wanna get, let me see if I got a I'll go to the overhead view here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, there we go. Um, oh, let's move this over. And I'm just going to throw this here. So this here is a little pocket mirror, right? A makeup mirror that you might uh, have in your um, purse or in your bathroom, right? So this works really... What I like about these kind of mirrors... <laughs> is this is actually tape from where I've taped it down at different times but if I now you're looking up my nose now you're looking at my eye right so we can use a mirror like this to kind of set it up and it won't move so much those are great here's another um, a larger mirror and so I can use something like this but the only thing is I'm gonna to need to kind of prop it up potentially, unless I wanna hold it in my hand the whole time that I'm drawing. And then here's just, you know, another another mirror. Look how dirty they look. This camera's great at picking up all of the details. Um, so we can use a mirror like this to hold in your hand while you're drawing, okay? Because what we're gonna, we ideally wanna be spending a, a, a bit of the time today drawing your own eye. And because your eye is there waiting for you to draw it whenever you so choose, right? So you don't need, you're not um, uh, beholden to finding images on the internet or taking photographs. Your eye is always there as long as you've got a mirror to look into. So um, what I want to do is um, I want to find Kind of making a few things up as I go along here. Uh, normally what we do in the class is I get people to, uh, we draw an artwork from history as kind of uh, a good jumping off point. But I think for today, we're gonna take a little bit of a tiny detour and we're just gonna jump right into things. So, What is what's going on? I can't see anything. He's just so okay. So let's move this onto the screen there. Okay, let me make this a little bit smaller. Hmm, doesn't quite fit. Let's. Uh, I'm just gonna switch this back and make. A little more room for it here. Okay. That's good. Now we can fit everything on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw some of the eyes that you see on your screen right now. 
and let me get this and the overhead view sorted here. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to drag in our overhead view. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, let's put that in there then. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's grab some pencils. What kind of pencils? I, one of the comments. Before we got started, what kind of pencil should we use? Should we use your regular HB pencil, a kind of a fancier HB pencil, a 2B pencil, or we got 4B. Um, you could use whatever one you like. What I'm going to do, as you, if you've seen a few of these episodes before, is I'm going to use some colored pencils just so you can see the different um, steps that I'm doing. So what I want you to do is let's, we're going to divide the sketchbook in half, the line right down the middle. And then let's divide it again this way. And then let's divide it again this way. Oops, we got a little bit of out of focus stuff happening here. I'll focus the camera in a second and I think we're on manual focus now it should stay like that okay so what I want you to do is I want you to choose eight of these eyes to the right of the screen here to draw in here you can do whichever ones you want I am going to draw uh, let me see. I'm, well, we'll see. We'll, I, I'll, as we go here, I'll kind of make things up on the spot. And I also usually set myself a timer for this. And so I'm going to do that while we get started. Um, okay, all these different phones that I use for timers are dead. Okay. So... Let's um, let's just start with the one in the in this top center there because it's a little bit kind of a silly one. So to begin with, again this is just a warm up. Let's just try drawing. So the top center one is what I'm drawing, and I'm just drawing these uh, the dark parts of the eye. And the proportions and everything don't have to be perfect. Um, I'm kind of searching out. We'll talk about the, the shape of the eye. Well, we talked about the shape of the eyeball last class. Um, for now, just try, just try drawing what you see here. And then we got these eyebrows. Another eyebrow here. Again, this is a warm-up series, so we're, we're not worried about making it perfect. So, in fact, what I normally do here is, let's say we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. Let's, I could do f two minutes each, but let's see what we can do in ten minutes so that uh, we kind of keep some momentum going here. So 10 minutes for the rest of them. Um, how about I'm gonna do the one that's in the very middle here, those kind of, uh, uh, well, those, these kind of, I don't know, angry, suspicious eyes. I'm just gonna draw this big eyebrow first here. Again, you can do whichever ones you like. One of the, the things that we'll talk about a few times today is the difference in like texture when it comes to eyes. So eyes are 
are the shiniest parts of the face um, because they are generally wet all of the time, right? Your eyes uh, need to stay wet, otherwise um, you're probably not... There's probably lots of other things wrong with you. Um, so uh, they are these kind of... Um, like glass balls that are in your head and they're covered in kind of a little film of, of uh, I don't know, what kind of fluid, bodily fluid in there to, to keep them um, uh, so they can turn very fluidly. So that, um, that wetness is really important to capture in your drawings. We want to, and often the, the kind of the way that people do that is, you know, creating a little reflection in the eye, right? Or, you know, if you've ever taken a photograph of someone and you see these, you know, their eyes kind of look a little funny. They look red, you know, the, the center of their eyes look red. Well, that's, you know, that's a whole other thing, but that's light kind of going right through the eye, bouncing off the back of the eye and coming right back out and you see the blood and everything inside there. Um, but uh, the that glassy quality is really important because it not only tells us about the shape of the eye. Um, okay, there's another one here. Look how we're doing with time. I spent a little too much, I spent two and a half minutes on that one, but I'm babbling on here. Um, how about let's go down to the one right below it with these eyes that are looking up. Again, you do whichever ones you want. And and I'm warming up too, by the way. All right? So when I'm uh, generally when I'm doing these classes in the afternoon, I'm coming at them, you know, uh, unprepared, right? I, it's not like I've been drawing all day long and then I'm just, you know, sitting down here now to 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 draw with you guys and I'm all, all hot and, you know, stretched and ready to go, limbered up. I'm, uh, I usually draw personally at night. I'm a kind of a bit of a night owl, so... This for teaching these classes is also a little bit of a way for me to get myself warmed up for my uh, the, the drawings I do at night. So um, everybody needs to warm up. I know there's some people. There's lots of artists. I, I would actually say the majority of artists do not warm up. They um, they just seem to they they well at least they think they don't need one and they just kind of start working. But they often find that they um, struggle right out of the gate. So that's why I'd, I'm a huge believer in warming up. And part of that, I guess, comes from uh, spending a lot of time with musicians. Okay, now I'm going to do the one on the very bottom down here, bottom left corner. And... I've, I've gone across the country a few times with um, a, a, a band called Brastronaut, really good friends of mine, and they, uh, you know, all those guys, like, you know, once we get to a venue, everyone piles out of the van, and we set all the equipment up, and then, you know, do the sound check and all that stuff, and... and behind the stage everyone's sort of practicing with their instruments they're, and they're not, they're not playing you know really complicated songs they're not even pr practicing their songs they're practicing their scales right they're practicing the fundamentals of their uh, their craft all right so going doing the things that we we think like oh you know they're they've been playing music for 20 years why would they need to do that and I, f I found that really inspiring, and I and I started thinking like, well, that's interesting. Like I, d I never really see uh, artists, or I, n I never really heard of my teachers talking about warming up. They would just, uh, uh, we would just come into the class and just start drawing, and 
and teacher would start doing these amazing things on the board and people around me would start doing amazing things and I would just be like oh it took me until the, the break until I was really feeling like I was doing stuff that I was happy with and I so once I started doing really basic warm-ups I found that once it came time to actually making the work that I was really you know like the the work that I was doing for for sale or you know um the stuff I really cared about, I was more, I was doing better work. That So, and I was like, oh man, that first hour, half hour of kind of, of drawing was always a little bit of, I was warming up whether I, I wanted to admit it or not. Okay, so just to give it the time here, we got three minutes on the clock. So I did these three in what, seven minutes. So, and I'm going probably faster than, than most people out there, so. Um, let me see, just gonna, I see people, um, talking about the music. This music here that you're listening to is by a good friend of mine, Sam Davidson. And I don't know if I put a link in the description to his music or not, but I will. Let's say I'm going to do these angry eyes on the second from the bottom on the far right. So the reason why we're warming up with these um, with these eyes like this is uh, these kind of cartoony eyes is to get a, a little bit of a, um, introduction to expression and uh, because the as I said at the top the eyes really convey so much of. Uh, the personality and and, and the, even the thoughts that are going on in someone's head. You know, if you watch a movie, um, one of the great features of a film is the ability to get really close up to what and to look at people's minute expressions. And that's, you know, in terms of like performance, that's a huge innovation. So if you think about before film, the, we would go see a stage play, right? And you're sitting, maybe you're sitting in the front row, maybe you're sitting up on the balcony in the cheap seats, right? Um, and you can't see the, you might, all you can really see is the physical gestures, really, of the person on stage. So that's why, like, theater tends to be very physical, right? People are singing and moving and dancing and so we see lots of physical movements um, and even early cinema had people um, you know because the camera maybe there's only one camera and it was stationary and it was a huge camera it didn't do a lot of close-ups so the actors would wear you know black eyeliner and mascara to really make their eyes stand out you know, they, they paint their faces white so that there's like a huge contrast between the eyes and their skin. And let me see, I'm just gonna, what's another one here? How about these, the kind of frightened eyes in the very top right corner? I'm gonna go to there. Um, so, the, um, People would so the camera was was uh, was not really able to to do much movement originally, and, and it took you know a couple decades before. Okay, there's ten minutes, so let's see. Let's we're gonna finish this off definitely in ten minutes. I just set another quick timer there. I always kind of like having a, a timer around while I'm working to kind of keep the momentum going, so that I'm not um, uh, getting lazy on myself and or or not even it's actually maybe not lazy is the, the, the wrong word it's almost like the opposite it's like obsessed you know like I just start like oh uh, I'm not doing that right I gotta go in here and I gotta get the eraser out and I gotta make sure it's perfect otherwise you know I'm gonna be so humiliated because I didn't do a good drawing well this is your warm-up right this is you know it's like 
the difference between going for a jog and running a marathon. All right? the, going for the jog is, you know, you're doing it on your own. No one's really watching. Um, you know, no one knows if you've ran one block or 40 blocks except you, right? So um, you could decide just to run a couple blocks and then go get an ice cream <laughs> if you want. No one knows. No one has to let, you know, you can hold yourself accountable, but. Okay, what other eyes should I draw here? Um. How about this winking one, the second from the top in the very center, uh, we've got. I'm also not showing you how to approach this either. You know, when I'm, uh, so some of you are like, well, I don't even know how to do these drawings. Well, I want you to try to figure out a process that works for you. Um, I'm just sort of trying to draw a little bit what I see. I'm not really using any kind of structure. I'm just imagining that these are kind of random shapes on the page that I'm trying to sketch. Because I really think it's, as you know, it's important to, to kind of find your own way when it comes to making artwork. You know, as, as we want help, for sure, um, but you also need a little bit of freedom to play and develop and kind of come up with your own strategies. That's a big part of being an artist. And find a way that works for you. And if it's not working for you, it doesn't mean that you're bad or you're incompetent or you should give up. It's just find a different strategy. Okay, um, which one here should I go to for my final one? Um, trying to see which one. Hmm, maybe this one right here. I haven't done one like that yet. Some of them are, are similar for sure. I, this is actually from a much larger uh, list of like 30 or so different expressions that I've just kind of condensed down to here and tried to find kind of the, the more exaggerated versions um, that I could that were most different. The, the, the other reason we're using these cartoony expressions is, like I've said many a times, it's always easier to kind of um, tone down things, to tone down the silliness than it is to ramp it up, right? If, you're, if you've got a drawing that is just, um, uh, that isn't working, usually I think it's because it's just too um, uh, it's too safe. You're not taking any chances. Uh, and once you start kind of exaggerating things a little bit, you find you progress faster. Oh, look at that. Um, and you'll learn a lot more because you can always do another drawing later on and take what you've learned and make it better. But cartoons, what they're doing is they're simplifying and exaggerating and focusing on like the most important kind of details that, um, that are required to kind of convey an idea. So. I'm going to leave that on the screen for just a couple seconds here. So I've got 
four minutes or so left. Uh, I might move on shortly here, though. I'm probably not going to wait for the whole extra four minutes to go by, but... Um, I would... I, I Obviously, because I, I don't... I'm not in a classroom with you. I don't know how uh, fast or slowly people are going. I would expect probably most of you are about maybe on your fifth drawing so maybe if you started up here you you're, might be down here or one of here um, if you're still on your second one or your third one that would tell me that you're moving very you know uh, you're, you're you're moving slowly because probably you're overthinking things you're a little bit too rigid in your in your style and your approach and here I'm just gonna reverse these here so this is the uh, so you can s because you can draw whichever ones you want here you, you saw me kind of drawing them and if you want you can just go back and reverse and watch them but I'll leave the chart up on the right <laughs> which way this way this way okay <laughs> so I'll leave that up there so um, you can refer to it just while I'm chatting away if you want um, so I gotta think about what I was saying um, oh so if you're if you're still like at you know fifth or you're moving on to the sixth one that, w that would tell me again that you're you just you probably want to just push yourself to go a little bit faster, right? That might, that'll probably mean initially that you're going to make some quote unquote mistakes, um, but you're probably not gonna do as bad as you think you're gonna do. And if you keep on just pushing yourself just a little bit beyond that comfort zone, I think you're gonna feel that you're gonna start progressing a little bit faster and you know, you know, I, I, I have a, I got in a really bad bicycle accident a year and a half ago, and so I had surgery on my elbow, and you can just see there's a big scar down there, and so I've had to go to um, physio and kinesiology and massage therapy, and so I got all these different people helping me, and uh, and in each case it's like people pushing me. Oh, to the com out of my comfort zone and at the time it is not a pleasant experience and maybe later on that day I'm like oh god this is like I don't want to go back next week but afterwards as I start realizing I've got more strength and flexibility it's like okay this is you know it's working I, I wish there was some other way I could take a pill and it would all be better but we gotta push ourselves a little bit okay so um, let's see, I got my clock is expiring here, so I'm just going to stop that, and I think we're going to go to the next uh, step here. So, let's turn the page. I'm going to bring that up, and then I'm going to find another image for, actually, you know what? While we're here, I will, I was going to go directly into, hmm, it's always like, what, what, what exactly do I want to do here right now? Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some photographs. of and we'll, we'll talk about the structure of the eye here <laughs> so get this nice and big for you it's going to be a shock to the system here when you uh -huh. Hello. 
Okay. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a picture of my, uh, I think it's this one. It's hard, hard to tell. Everything's all backwards on the camera and the screen here. So this is a photograph that my wife took a couple nights ago of my eye. And just as, oh, I guess that one's a little bit zoomed out. I just thought I would, um, kind of going back and forth. All that's happening here is just my eye is moving up and down, or I'm actually just move, really moving my eyebrow here. And you can see the, my eye opening, kind of expanding a little bit. Um, and you notice the that fold above my my eyelash is uh, coming down over my eye a little bit. Um, I guess I'm just showing that just because how dynamic the eye actually is, and how just a little tiny change in you know that can actually change the expression quite radically. So let's bring um, our I back here and we're going to do a drawing um, so again I'm going to use a couple different colors here to to suggest the different um, uh, the, the, the different kind of steps in my drawing so I'm going to start out with this pink which would be your um, the the underdrawing the very the the basic structure of the eye. So you well how about we'll, we'll use my this picture of my eye here, and then or if you want you can even hold up your own mirror and take a look in the mirror at your eye. It's up to you, totally up to you as you go here. So and I'm going to draw this really big. In fact, let's make this a little bit bigger. Just. Um, okay, so the first thing that is always really important to remember is that the eye is an eyeball. It's a circle. It's a sphere. All right, so let's, we're drawing this ball here, and I think it was in our third or fourth class where we were drawing spheres and then we were shading them. And if you haven't watched the shading episode, then that would be uh, something I would encourage you to do because it would be um, probably really helpful for what we're about to do. But uh, this will be a bit of a, a, a refresher for some people and maybe an introduction to some of you. So the, the iris here is roughly, we basically have um, you can basically fit about three of these in terms of the size of the eye, right? So you, you don't necessarily need to draw this. I'm just kind of illustrating, right? So the, the, in terms of the size of the eyeball, how big your iris is. And the iris is the part of the eye that is, in this case, kind of green, right? In my eye, right? So... I am, I'm, let's say, just so we've we got this here, I'm going to use a different color to illustrate this. All right, so this is my iris. Then inside is the, is your pupil. Right, so this is the part of the eye that expands and contracts. So there's no way, I mean, in this instance, it basically looks, you know, makes a nice kind of symmetry here because there's, you know, maybe three pupils to the size of that iris. But of course, your iris can, exp you know, if this was a really dark room, it could expand much larger, right? So how do, so that's, that's something you would notice by observation. We talked about reflections in here, so we can already see that there's this kind of, in the way that this photo was taken, there's this big bright highlight here. And we've got maybe another one, another one kind of happening. So those things are really important to capture. Oh, and I guess there's another 
little one kind of happening here. So when I'm drawing, I like to kind of, you know, just make little placeholders of where the, the light and the dark is. Right? There's a few other ones here on the eyelid itself, which is also a little bit wet. So we'll just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so now we've got the basic structure of the eyeball. And while I'm here, I'm just going to use, let's say, a slightly different color to just do a quick little bit of shading here. So let's imagine this is just a ball sitting on a table, right? So the light is hitting from kind of above in the front, right? So this tells us that there's a light bulb, you know, where would be my hand be kind of just up the top of the corner or kind of coming from this direction, right? So I'm just going to use another pencil to kind of add a little bit of shading here. You'll know, notice the way that I'm holding the pencil. I always think of it, it's like I put my pencil down and I pick it up like this. Now, lots of different ways to do it and to hold it, but the, the idea is that the paper is rubbing right along the side rather than the point, I'm using the side of the pencil. So this ball here, right? And you can see how I can, I can make things darker just by applying a slight bit more pressure to my drawing. So I just want you to be reminded at all times of the circular spherical nature of the eyeball. And then there's, it's still round on this side. See the way that I'm also shading, kind of going around and around, right? As opposed to straight across, which is gonna flatten this shape. So there we go. So here's our eyeball. And so I guess since I know that this is, we got this highlight in here, I'm just gonna come in. Now, if obviously you're doing your, a drawing of your own eye, it's gonna look a little bit different. Now this is at the moment kind of a very, the way that it appears is very dark, but I'm also just, giving it a little bit more darkness on one side. So I'm not completely making it a big flat thing, even though it appears to be like that in the photograph. I also wanna just, I never like just a totally flat shadow. I wanna give there some dimension in there. Now, um, the way that the iris, drawing the iris, you could, if you look in the photograph, I guess it's slightly out of focus here as I zoom in, right? So we can't see all of the details, which is probably good for us right now because we don't want to get bogged down in the details. Um, <clears throat> but often the kind of convention people do is draw these kind of... Uh, about to sneeze! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry if I blew out your speakers there. My goodness, it just kind of hit me suddenly. So one of the conventions, it's a bit of from the kind of cartooning world, I guess, is this kind of bicycle spoke kind of um, imagery, which is kind of there anyway. That we, we have these like little blood vessels and everything that is kind of feeding in and out of the center of the eye so that it can kind of expand and contract like a um, there's like a, uh, here in Vancouver, the, the big giant football stadium has a retractable roof like that in the center and these kind of cables that go all the way to the middle. So it's kind of like that where kind of pull open and closed, right? So I'm just kind of drawing that in for right now. You can also see that there's different parts of this iris that are a little bit darker right so then than others and that could just be you know you can go in and shade it a little bit I'm not gonna be focused too much on this but going trying to darken that out okay so the, here's the eyeball now let's put the structure of the eyelids on here so I'm gonna use my my pink pencil again just to kind of help sketch this out so one of the important things, we talked about this last class, is that very, very rarely 
would you ever see, well, you'd never see your eyeball like this. Unless, you, of course, you're doing a cartoon, right? Because if we drew an eye that was big and wide and we saw lots of room around the iris, then we would assume that this is somebody who's like really shocked, right? Like the, that expression, your eyes wide open, right? So, but very, very, very rarely can that ever happen. In fact, you know, just, and I did this last time, but even if I look, you know, or I look into a mirror, I have to like really, it's, it's exhausting, right? So you could feel like the muscles in your forehead, like, oh, it's like hard work to open your eye wide enough that you could see white all the way around, right? So that very rarely happens. So let's start with the bottom eyelid or the top eyelid, sorry. So the top eyelid, you know, generally kind of, you know, it starts off to the side and then it's gonna come, and then you see how it's crossing over the top of uh, of the iris here. And again, this is the shape of my eye. Your eye would be a little bit different. But let's say we go like this. And also, I guess it's also worth mentioning that there's sort of an imaginary line here, right? Kind of going right through the eye. Now, depending on what direction the the eye is and what kind of the, where the photograph is that line could change right but if we're looking straight on then generally the the eyelids are going to kind of go you know to the, the, the where they're going to meet on the sides is fairly kind of you know um, uh, the points are kind of parallel or intersect right through the, the same kind of horizon line i guess you could say okay so the bottom eyelid, it's going to, um, it's going to kind of come underneath the, the top eyelid. Just, you know, so let's bring this and you can see again in my photograph, it's clipping a little bit of this. have this kind of, so that's why often eyes are drawn with this kind of a shape, or I guess if I was just to make it a little bit darker, kind of a, this would be your very generic eye. Right, something like this. Now, that's, this is the beginning, right? Again, this is just the my, my little marks that I'm making here before I, I get fully started. Now let's look here in the corner of my eye, the in, inside corner towards, this is my nose over here, right? So in the corner, there's this little white spot here, right? And again, the eye is set into the structure of the skull. So this, you know, comes over the eyeball a little bit, right? So I'm gonna now look at this structure here. All right, so I got this, and then, all right, so if, as I'm developing this, I can kind of come up. So here's the simplified version, right? And then as we get more complicated, Right, so this can sometimes be drawn like that. I've seen people do that. Um, okay, so we've got the bottom eyelid. Maybe actually I'm gonna come over top of here with my darker pencil. Um, okay, so then, and, uh, we're, so the next thing we want to do, we've got the eyelids, the, the, where they, the, the, the openings of them are anyway, and actually this is just like this is going to kind of wrap 
in a little bit. All right, so it's, it's, we, we want to make sure that that eyeball is not going to roll out here. So it's the eye, eyelashes or eyelids, sorry, are always, you know, they, they terminate a little bit before the eyeball. Right? Otherwise, if they were here, then we would see this little gap of space on either side. We don't have that, right? So now I'm going to draw this um, next fold here. And this is, you know, something that people maybe maybe don't think about, but it's these folds or wrinkles that are, you know, the, the things that really give an individual eye its character. Right, so yours is gonna look different than mine. Maybe you've got more folds there than I do or less folds, right? Maybe you've got, you know, these so-called crow's feet on the side, right? Which, you know, um, when I laugh, right? I got a whole bunch of little laugh lines on the side of my eye. So nailing these things is really gonna help uh, nail the structure of your eye or the, the individual, um, personality of each eye. So this is my eye here. And I'm going to do the bottom now. So we've got this, I'm going to this eye, uh, the bottom eyelid. See, it's not as dark of a fold, because there's more skin on the top eyelid than the bottom eyelid. Right, so more of the skin kind of folds up under here than does down here. And the, and the darker you make this line underneath here, the more tired and the older you're going to make this person look. So often when we see people making drawings of younger people or women, they may even omit this bottom line. And they certainly would omit any lines or so-called bags under the eye, right? So, um, okay, you can, you can also see just like the subtle, like this is kind of, I, I wouldn't want to kind of illustrate all of this because it's going to make me look really old, but just it's important to kind of see this, these kind of curving shapes, all right? And then here's, you know, again, if I was to draw this, we also see this other another kind of line of skin coming down here. So like I've said before, I want to kind of exaggerate some of these things so that I can always reduce them, I can erase them, but they're there. Okay. Um, now, this part of the eye right here is covered by the, the, the bone of your skull here, right? So I can feel this kind of where that, um, I could feel the, the ridge of the opening in my skull. And then there's my eye, um, eyebrow. And again, this is gonna be different for every different facial expression. Maybe I'll just zoom out here. So we would have this eyebrow coming down. And then here's the top part of that same eyebrow. And maybe you've got thin eyebrows, but this is not necessarily even, this is kind of the, the you might have, you know, like often, for instance, I see women who've got like very kind of sculpted, or actually I should go back down here, sorry. Um, so here's, So this is the, the bottom of the eyebrow and this is the top of the eyebrow. And inside of here is the ridge, the kind of the most outward part of the eye, right? So the, or the, the structure of the face, right? Is in the middle of these two lines. So often I'll see people who've got, you know, very sculpted eyebrows, whose eyebrow, you know, technically grows in here but they're just kind of drawing right along the edge, right? Or even higher, or probably not lower. I, I'm not a, a beautician or makeup expert or anything, but you would probably not want to draw your eyebrow lower on the face, because that would probably tend to make you look angry, right? And we don't want that. 
Okay, so let's now, now that we've got this basics here illustrated, I'm gonna start kind of shading in and I'm gonna make things maybe a little bit darker than they are just so you can kind of see. Uh, again, I always talk about exaggerating things. Um, if I'm looking straight into the camera or the mirror, I'm gonna see a little bit more of the, the, the almost like a little bit of a shelf along the, uh, the bottom eyelid. So you see how the, the, in this photograph, my eyelashes, you know, they, they appear to kind of, there's a little gap between here. And in fact, why don't we draw some of these eyelashes? So I'm just gonna kind of curve these out. And I always try to give them a little bit of, um, a curve to them so they're not just straight even even though they may appear that way sometimes in photographs giving a little and they you don't want them all to be kind of computer generated uh, all going very nicely in the same line it's kind of nice to kind of vary them up a little bit and kind of they bunch up in different places and some are kind of a little bit longer than others it's going to show the personality of your of your eyelashes so, okay, I'm just gonna do a few more of these. So you can see how there's this little gap in between here. And actually, let's let's do the top eyelashes now here as well. And you see how now they appear to almost be coming from underneath here, right? So because this top part of the eyelid has kind of folded up underneath here right so we've got these I like to kind of personally start around the the outside and then work my way towards the middle and you see kind of as they go here they're growing in this direction and then they start coming up here and they start going this way right so when they're up here they're kind of pointing straight forward and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so depending, if you're drawing um, a, uh, a woman, often you'll have very long eyelashes or you'll kind of exaggerate them a little bit just to, um, you know, uh, really hammer home the difference between a male and a female um, uh, drawing. So often, you know, one thing I often see is people will omit eyelashes on a male figure completely. And that's a bit of a mistake because then it just looks like a little bit like a robot. So we would expect to see eyelashes on both uh, male and female figures. But often people will not draw the bottom eyelashes on the male figure. Okay. So now let's, I'm going to start doing some shading. And again, I'm going to go a little bit more, I'm going to, in fact, you know what? I've got, some people are asking me what kind of tools. So here, what I have, maybe I'll just show you what this is. These are, this is willow charcoal. I love using charcoal. Um, this is maybe just a little bit, thick. so inside here, this is what it looks like. You've got these little sticks like this, and they're super fragile, right? Like I don't have to, press and then they snap right and so you can easily break them down into different sizes whatever and so here's maybe I'll use a little bit of a longer one here and just so you can see how different art materials work while we're, we're doing this so I'm gonna go over some of these lines and then I'm gonna darken them so I can easily take my finger and do some smudging here. If you don't have a pencil or, or charcoal like this, you could use like a 2B pencil, or you can even just regular use a regular pencil. So this is an HB. If I wanted to do this, and I can just make a line and then try to rub it in a little bit. Um, uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna shade this in. I'm going to make it a little bit darker than it needs to be, just so you can see this here. 
So this shading helps emphasize that one side is, is darker than the other and that one part is popping up and therefore getting more light, all right? And also that this, you know, again, I'll, I'm gonna come around here, I'll do the same thing. So we have the, this, actually, one of the things, why I, I like these smaller pieces is I can use them on their side rather than drawing on the front, so. Totally different, there we go. So often this area still gets a lot of light, but in the corners of the eye it gets darker. Just keep on smudging. If I, if I feel like I've gone too dark, I just keep on moving my finger around. And then I can even, once I got it a little bit dark, I can take this and apply it in other places. So let's darken this area here. And then, of course, you, you don't want to forget, where did that little piece go? That inside, the eyeball itself is not a pure glowing white orb, right? It's got, um, uh, it's, it's also going to be shadowed and it's going to be a little bit darker, in the, especially towards the corners. So you can see how I've that little little bit of a highlight helps keep it looking like it's a little bit wet in there. Okay. And then this area right in here is also going to be tends to be kind of dark. Maybe I've inspired you to go out and get some willow charcoal or just get a darker pencil so that you can do a little bit of the smudging. I love doing this. Some people go nuts because they're like, oh my god, fingers are so dirty so quickly. Um, I am going to, let's say, once I've got a little bit, I am going to come back to my pencil because I do feel bad that maybe not everybody has these, uh, this, these tools. So I'm just going to go back here with my pencil and kind of darken this up as if I would normally be drawing. So I'm just going to show you, we're going to get want this area to be darker, this area in here to be darker, underneath in here, All right? And there's going to be almost like a little shadow underneath this eyelid, right? That's casting shadow onto the eye itself. And that also helps show that the thickness of the eyelid. All right. Um, we want to try to keep like a little bit. Uh, I have an eraser here. You know, one of the uses of an eraser is we could come back. In here and just brighten this up a bit. All right, any kind of highlights we want to put back in there. All right, so I just because I want to get that this uh, highlight of that part of the eye in there. Um, I want to make this eyeball or the iris, sorry, a little bit darker. OK. 
Okay. So I, if I was you, I would try studying your eye and seeing if you can draw some of these. I, and I know when I teach these classes and we have, let's say, a little often, most of the time, there's, uh, I would say the majority of my classes have older students and people get very self-conscious about their eyes and the wrinkles around their eyes and they don't, because often we try to avoid really looking at ourselves that closely and um, and that makes me really sad quite frankly because I think we should be celebrating our faces and um, all of those wrinkles are kind of um, show kind of our worldliness and the different experiences we've had and um, there are I think badges of honor especially all those laugh lines it right, shows the great life that you've led thus far okay so you could so you see in the in the photograph there's this, these kind of red veins in there now every eye has you know, uh, I'll just kind of, every eye, especially when you open your eyes up and you kind of look, I wear contacts. I'm looking at my eyes all the time, every morning and every night, I'm taking my contacts in and out. So I got to open my eyes up wide to get it. And I see all the redness like underneath, you know, my, uh, my eyelids. If I was to draw those red lines in there, it's instantly going to make this eye look like an angry wild like you know the the blood is pumping out of all around my body there's a lion there where i'm about to engage in a fight right so um even though they're there i would resist the urge to just to draw them unless you're drawing something really up close and you're trying to get all the, the details but even then I would tone it down a little bit just because it's going to create the effect of somebody of that of the blood rushing to the surface of the of the skin or the eyeball in this case right and it's probably not going to be flattering people are going to read it differently and you're going to say no 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 that's the way that the eye. And you're like whoa but it looks like you're something's going on like you're somebody about to be punched in the face or whatever right so i would avoid drawing those those kind of veins in there um and then lastly here before i guess we're doing with time here how am i doing um uh um well, well i think we're going to do a few more here but uh in terms of this drawing here uh now i want to do my eye lashes now i would recommend like you if you're when you're trying to do this is is looking at the at individual hairs and trying to draw like every fifth hair or something so we don't want to draw every single one of them but the part of you know getting a likeness is to try to get a certain amount of accuracy and trying to kind of notice the subtle details right so in, with in terms of my eyes here like the these eyebrows you know starting to grow in different directions as they get closer towards my nose here you know and adding layering them and then they all kind of come in here and then you know let's say on this side i've got some going this direction and then even kind of coming down from this way so what are your eyebrows doing which way do they go all right so describing some of this is super helpful all right and then as i go i can then start adding i can darken this in here a little bit because if i didn't darken it it might look like i had blonde eyebrows which i you know i have a few light hairs in there but um probably a few of them are starting to go a little gray <laughs> um if i want i could use this charcoal and kind of go in here and really kind of quickly darken this especially in the areas where it's most dark If I 
went a little bit too much. I just rubbed some off here. I could I could do all of this with a pencil. I don't need to use the charcoal, but you know, you could this box of this this I bought for six fifty Canadian, and this was from Rath Art Supplies here in Vancouver, local art supply store. Um, but I know you could get it for much cheaper, so you could probably buy it for like two or three dollars, I'm sure, online somewhere. Um, okay, so you could see the the original sphere, the structure of the eye, has disappeared. That's because I've been rubbing on the drawing a lot. Um, but uh, I think it's really important to kind of keep that in mind and, and even to emphasize it over and over and over again. The more that you emphasize that the spherical nature of the eye, it's going to give it that dimension, the roundness, the roundness of the eye lids, right? And even when these things aren't super visible, it just makes it believable. Okay, so I think what I want to do, I could keep on working on this and getting more and more refined details, but I think for our purpose as an introductory class, that drawing is probably as much as I want to do. I'm going to put this back. I'll leave that up on the screen for just a couple seconds. Um, and maybe actually just before I... I'm going to move that down. You know, I'm just looking at these two drawings side by side, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job at capturing a likeness of this eye. Now, I, I, I notice I've drawn this eyebrow maybe a little bit higher. Maybe some of these could kind of come down a little bit lower. Um, and you know, this I kind of is maybe arched a little bit more than it, than it needs to. But all in all, I feel like, I mean, I look at this and I can see my own eye in here. Right? And it's and what is different about this image than anybody else's? It's these little subtle things as to where this tear duct is. You know, this these little lines right in here, right in here, this fold here, the the density and the size of my eyelashes, you know, the the sort of bags under my eyes and where they start and end just those tiny little details five or six little things in there make this you know a one in a billion eye right so that's what you want to focus on you want to look for those little tiny details and even though i didn't nail them correctly and they're maybe a little bit out of proportion they're still the 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 cumulatively as they add up they add up to my eye okay so you could focus, I, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to, to do a self portrait of just your eye, like a really big one. You could even turn your page and draw it on the side. And you can, for like, to get really good at this is try drawing your eye in a number of different expressions. Like try, you could do this taking like a selfie. You could do one where you're you're looking into the camera with your eye kind of, you know, angry, wide open, surprised, sad, you know, like try, <laughs> you could try all the different ones and take a bunch of different pictures and then try drawing some of those. And you could try drawing them relatively quickly. You, in this one we spent like half an hour on, but if let's say you spent not two minutes, like the, our warm up drawings, but say 10 minutes, right? You did, you know, five 10 minute drawings of five different expressions. Wow, that would be, that's your college level drawing education right there. And you don't need me standing over your, your shoulder looking at it. You can do that and you'll start noticing pretty quickly your ability is exploding um, very quickly. Having said that, if you do wanna do that and you want my feedback on your drawings, then send them to me. You can send them to me right now if you like. You take a quick picture on your phone, boom, 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 direct message on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 
um, and then just put in the comments where it is so that I can find it quickly. Um, or do it over the course of the weekend and then send them to me and on Tuesday's class. Especially if you do the I, I'll, I'll talk about them at the very beginning of that class. Um, so, maybe just before... I, I do want to try to do a few more things, squeeze these in for today. So I'm going to pull this hill, and then I'm going to um, pull this up there. things to fit on the screen here. Okay. Um, so, I think to finish off for today, what I want to do uh, is kind of maybe do a, a few more fast drawings, whether you want to draw them with me or you just want to watch. I would say trying to draw them or pause would be would be great. But, you know, I'm drawing a comic book myself right now and doing this stuff I find is just helpful for me. So I'm just going to do this just for my own benefit as a artist. So now I'm going to show you kind of how I would approach this. Um, I'm going to draw a few of these, you know, these three rows of eyes that you see here. Um, let's, uh... Hmm, which ones do I want to draw? Let's draw... I'm going to go to that middle row because mm, we got three that are kind of facing the viewer. So I'm actually going to draw the one second from the right in the middle. And... So, here I guess I'm gonna, you probably want to see what I'm actually doing here, so let's pull this down here. So, um, let's do, I'm going to start out, again, if you imagine I'm drawing very lightly, so I'm going to draw this, I'm going to start out with an eyeball. Draw that eyeball in there so we know the shape of the eye. Actually, I'll just keep on using this here. I love, I love, 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 love um, this, these type of like uh, etchings. I think this might even be an Albrecht Dürer uh, image. Albrecht Dürer was, uh, you know, 500 years ago this guy lived. And look at these amazing drawings that he did. You know, they're just of eyes, but look how beautiful this is. So, I'm trying to describe these shapes, these very big um, eyes. Very expressive, and also I really like the rendering that's been done on here with um, this uh, cross-hatching. Okay, so I'm sketching it all in before I start to... Uh, doing anything else in here. I'm just going to get the basics in. And we got this shape here, and then we got this eyebrow, which I'm just going to quickly locate. It's kind of that shape. Um, okay. So now that I've got the basics, this would be the the, the, the underdrawing for my drawing. Now let's come in and, again, this here was the eyeball. So I've drawn the, the tear duct just coming in a little bit over onto the top of the surface. And this here is the same thing as I come around here. And I'm going to put, start here with the tear duct. I'm going to draw this bottom eyelid starts out kind of dark and then kind of is not as dark here right and then I'm just gonna adjust this come a little bit over the eyeball again okay. 
And you have a lot more liberty when you're doing the uh, the the top eye eyelash here. So I got this, and then you can see we're seeing because the eye uh, the eye is kind of pointing upward. We can see a little bit of this eyelid here, just like we previously had down here. So we have we have this little gap. Okay, I'm gonna draw some big eyelashes in. And then not as many down here. Okay. I should have set a timer for myself. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, let's, I'm gonna do this faster than that. So let's say, I'm gonna give myself four minutes to get this whole drawing done here so that I can try to get a bunch more here quickly. So you see, as I'm shading this, I'm gonna try to use, rather than use the, the charcoal willow stick, I'm gonna use these, uh, this cross hatching technique to, to do this. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to go for very curving lines. I don't want a single straight line in this entire image. So get this fold coming right down. See, he's got even that fold kind of comes out to emphasize that shape.
Let's turn that on. Hmm, this should be fully charged. What happened? Ah, that battery died. Darn, okay, that's weird. I should have charged these up. Um, okay, so I'm drawing now from the side here. This, uh, this one right here. So, again, half of this eye is going to be kind of covered, inset into the skull. So we're not going to see all of it. So this is a good reminder. Okay. So your nose would be here like that. Um, so I don't need to, obviously, I'm not going to draw the back of this, but it is helpful just to kind of show to get this initial part of the eye nailed in here. So let's now go into a, a real pencil to darken this. Some eyelashes. And I just realized one little mistake I just made here was this. Oops. I, I want to make sure that I convey the thickness of this eyelash. So rather, this should not be one line here. I need to give it a little bit so that like this eyeball is actually inset in here. So just a real quick, you know, me making those little tiny mistakes is, is helpful for people watching. All right again, so this, see that little tiny difference? It makes a big, it's a big deal. Big, big, big deal. Uh, all right. Just sharpen my pencil real quick. It's, it's those little subtle things that that uh, carry so much weight. Um, okay. As I'm going here, I gotta speed it up. So I might not be looking at the original image here very much. Who did it better? One of the greatest artists of all time, or or me? <laughs> no, no, no big, uh, no big deal. Albert Dürer, one of the, the 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 masters for sure. What else do I want to do on this drawing here? Um, I think that might be good. Um, okay. Let's see. I'll do a few more of them, even though my batteries are going to start dying around me, but uh, why not? Um, so what would be another one? Let's draw the eyelash that are, or the eyelids that are closed here. So in the center and the bottom. Okay, again, you can, now we really see the shape of the eyeball.
Um, okay, so when I get this here, the eyelid really important, and also the pretty much can't go wrong with making this darker. The darker that is, the more it's going to emphasize that it's closed and that there's a weight to it. And then in here, this also tells us this is the inside part of the eye, so that the nose would be right here, right? And then all these eyelashes. see this kind of little bit of um, the white outline here that has been kind of left here which works really well for um, sketching just being a little mindful of that I love cross hatching because you can't really go wrong. Like you can just keep on layering more and more. If it gets a little bit too dark in places, well, you just have to darken other places to kind of make up for it. So your drawing is going to get progressively darker, which is why you want to try to move around the picture as much as possible rather than just for focusing on one little area so that everything kind of develops at the same time. It doesn't look like anybody's um, sent in any pictures, so I think um, I'm going to call it a day pretty shortly here yeah, so that uh, everybody can move on with their afternoons or evenings, depending on where you are on our beautiful planet. Um, although I do Part of me just, whenever I see an empty space like this, I'm so compelled to want to fill it up. So, ah, let's just keep on drawing. I'll do 10 more minutes of drawing, two more drawings, and then we're going to call it a day. Whether, who knows where you're at, if you're drawing or or you're just uh, watching. Um, this is definitely a little bit more advanced stuff, and trying to do this in the time that I'm doing it is, so I'm drawing the top row second from the right I haven't done no, I just <laughs> double check I haven't done that one yet um, and it's a good reminder like even um, not so much these days but I should be doing more of this like I made a note to myself, like, one of the things I'm thinking about doing is, like, t getting some draw, like, how to draw books, and then just, you know, drawing every single step in them, again, from start to finish, and kind of making videos of that, and trying to, you know, sort of, like, reviewing them, and trying to find, like, the best ones which would be maybe useful or interesting for other people. But for me, it's just like that, it's like research and, and uh, practicing and getting, trying to find like, you know, I want to be the best artist I can possibly be. So that involves having to do some work, right? I have to like, to, to master my, my craft, I got to put in the time. And, um, 
And why not kind of go right back to the basics and make sure the foundation is solid here. And there's no reason that anybody else, that anyone watching right now, couldn't do something similar. Good, another thing too with your if you're doing these like timed drawings is they just keep you moving forward like you know I I've had I've been pretty lucky to have been able to do a lot of traveling and one of the things I'm sometimes traveling with people that aren't artists or they don't consider themselves artists or they don't draw or any kind of thing like that and so I'll be sitting in a coffee shop with them and I don't want to be antisocial and just to kind of tune them out and draw for two hours while they're sitting there kind of like oh my goodness when is this going to be so i like okay i'm gonna say i'm gonna do a 10 minute drawing right now and then i promise you we're gonna get up and we're gonna go to that museum or go get some dinner or such and such right and um setting a timer there and just getting as much done as i can do there's like that urgency and I find like when I'm when I've got some urgency that I kind of manage to surprise myself and rise to that occasion. Um minute left, okay. Um, And I, I used to fill up sketchbook after sketchbook after sketchbook full of this kind of stuff, like looking at drawings, getting sketchbooks. Because you can, at the, at, well, maybe not your regular library, but definitely um, at art school libraries, you can find books of, of the sketchbooks of Leonardo or, or et cetera. And you can see there, and a lot of the stuff is on the web now these days too, so... Uh, you can find these kind of things and work from them. And looking at the drawings that other artists did is super informative. Okay. Okay, so I, I could probably put another two or three minutes uh, in here. I'm just going to add this shadow here because it's driving me nuts if I see it without it there. Oh, okay, okay. Keep on moving, keep on moving, Michael. Keep on going. Okay, okay. Uh, one more here. Which one of them am I going to do? Um, let's do the one right next to it. Let's move this over here. Okay. Forgot to bring my water down here, so I'm getting kind of a bit of that dehydration headache happening here which is oh there we go the battery just died on that camera maybe that's a good uh <laughs> uh I think you know what um that's a good sign that i should uh call it a a session for today um, for those of you looking for some extra stuff to do in the meantime, here's just a little note about what you could do. So on the screen there, you just see, if I was you, what I would try to do is, is doing what I'm doing. You could use some of the images we I've shown you on the computer and you, know, you can draw those over and over and over again 
get out a magazine, fashion magazine, sports magazine, doesn't matter. Just draw some of the eyes of people in those magazines or take a selfie, take pictures of your own eyes, take a picture of your friend, go online, look at some stuff on Facebook, Google image things, try doing some of those drawings. The more that you do this, the more confident you're gonna be. You may be at the beginning of class, you felt like I couldn't, I can't draw an eye at all. If you were to do just like, you know, five of these, at, and not, not every day, but in total, like your ability to draw and to draw faces and portraits goes instantly through the roof. So that's what I would try to do, is try to, to find some images and then draw those images in your sketchbook. The more you do, the, the easier it gets from here on in. Next class, we're gonna be on next Tuesday, we're gonna be drawing the nose, which I think is probably the most interesting, unique part of the human face. And that's where we really can start describing unique personalities of different people. And you really see the individual style of different artists come through. So, um, have your mirror ready, have your sketchbook, pencils, if you want to see if you can get some of this charcoal sticks um, to play with because the nose has very few edges on it. So we're going to be doing a lot of either like cross hatching or smudging, blending to get that kind of a feeling in for the nose particularly. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show and, and coming into my studio and watching me draw. Hopefully you were able to get a little bit done as well. If you've done some great drawings, I'd love to see them. Send them to me. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Like the Facebook and Twitter and all those other things that I have out there. And share it with your friends. Say, hey, I just learned how to draw an eye. Watch this video by this guy, Michael. He'll help you out. <laughs> and you want to support the channel, you can send a small donation via PayPal, and the link is below. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Until then, have a great weekend. Stay safe and... Drawing is a great way to keep yourself healthy while instead of running up to the coffee shops and sitting around and getting sick. So we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye, everybody. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Uh, come on. Make that big. Okay. Bye-bye.